Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and indeed another Mississippi voice. And I'm glad to see that we have someone from Mississippi State on the panel today. That is my alma mater, so good choice there. Mr. Breckenridge, let me come to you uh, for our first question. Oak Ridge National Labs in Tennessee, they are home to the frontier which is the fastest computer in the world. And it is capable of executing one quintillion flops per second. And it has allowed the US to enter the exascale computing error. And this is unlocking tremendous potential. We are really so proud of the team that is working on this. But if you would just touch for a moment on what supercomputing and quantum technologies will unlock what economic and benefits that you expect to see coming from this, and then talk touch on the downsides whether they're economic or otherwise, of the U.S. losing the quantum race. Thank you, Senator. Um, yes, that absolutely the, the number one system in the world is at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, uh, as you uh, indicated. Um, the, the, uh, the, the U.S. must... Um, We've, we must put more focus into uh, developing and giving access to these systems to a broader set of our uh, research community. The, the systems that are, uh, that are available now uh, to the traditional university are an order of magnitude smaller or, or maybe many orders of magnitude smaller than that at, the, uh, uh, at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Um, it, it, this is a, a focus that we have to uh, work on, not, not only from a technology standpoint, but from a workforce standpoint as well. And uh, if you don't mind, would you repeat your second question? Well, what are the downsides? You know, I think we know of some of the benefits, and I'm pleased that you mentioned the workforce, because since not everybody has access like the students at University of Tennessee who are partnered with Oak Ridge and who are working Frontier. I think that that is one of the downsides, but also I want you to talk about what you see as the downsides if we lose this race, this quantum race. Oh, losing the quantum race has uh, a huge downsides from the national security standpoint, uh, to being able to, to advance technology. So I think it is something certainly we, we are unable to, uh, to lose. It's just n not an option for us. Um, okay. The, 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 from the, from the uh, benefits of, of HPC and, and quantum, uh, you know, those are, those are many, uh, whether that is making safer vehicles or doing a better job uh, in predicting, say, where hurricanes may uh, impact us. Uh, this is certainly something that, that's, uh, that we're facing now. If we are able to uh, see and, and develop a better model of where these hurricanes may make landfall, we could uh, uh, save lives and, and increase our uh, responsiveness to that and uh, to that point minimize the economic uh, uh, impacts to us as much as we can. Well, and I think we all know that having quantum technologies will open the door for so many things with logistics, with blockchain, with cryptocurrencies, with supply chain. Mr. Suter, I want to come to you on the supply chain issue. There's been a lot of discussion about semiconductors, and we've heard about that today. We've heard about, and we're seeing some of the worst supply chain issues that we have ever had. So um, what, how is that prohibiting what your company is doing and how severely do you see this impacting the growth in this technology sector for our country as we face these supply chain constraints? Well, Senator, uh 
First of all, um, so when we speak about quantum computing, uh, it is an integration of classical computing as well as this new technology. So any problems we may have with supply chain with uh, classical computing, such as semiconductors, will spill over into our, our inability to do things with quantum. Uh, but there are some new technologies, such as photonics, photonic integrated circuits, as well as lasers. Uh, with, with cold quanta, um, uh, we sometimes say we, we, we shine lasers at very tiny things, and those are being, at, being atoms. Uh, well, we need many atoms, many qubits, ultimately tens of thousands or millions of those. We need extremely robust laser technology uh, that we can get when we need it. We have to scale these things down. You, you, you can't have 10,000 lasers just to do a little bit of computing. So we need advanced technology and development, domestic technology, on these so-called photonic integrated circuits. Uh, think of semiconductors, but instead of pushing electrons around, we're pushing around photons of light. Many other countries have developed photonic centers. Uh, I believe the Netherlands have invested over a billion dollars in photonics as well. Are we happy enough to get these sorts of essential supplies from outside our borders? So I believe a systematic examination of the different, uh, not just quantum computing, but quantum, sensor mod sens quantum sensing modalities, uh, the consi constituent parts are necessary, identification of where they come from, um, and can we provide those ourselves? But for us, it's photonics and it's lasers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.